Let's freaking go. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello and welcome. Welcome, welcome to what will be the 30th, uh, 13th episode of Parasite Classes. Dang. It's been a... <laughs> We're having all of our good things, apparently. All good things are happening. I'm sure of it. But hey. Who would know? Who would know? Uh, today's episode is going to be a tad bit quicker. Tad bit quicker. Just a tad. Just, just a tad. I mean, not just a tad, but uh, about, uh, you know, quicker. Um, this is how it works. This is just how it works, you know. It just, you know, um, a lot of things uh, need to be said. Unfortunately, not a lot can be said um, without going to specifics. Because here's the thing with the Tapodas. They are the creatures that everyone knows. So, if I do more than an overview for today's episode, uh, which will be the introduction of what we're going to talk about in the following episode, and complementary information on what tetrapodas are. There we go. And there's also some, uh, some kind of bonus information. There's going to be some bonus information, uh, which will allude to the future of the pirated classes. However, hey. welcome to my kingdom. Welcome to an introduction to Tetrapoda. These are all the cool buildings, and as last week, uh, no, last time we finished with Tiktalik, well, we begin again with all your good boy Tiktalik. The boy that knew how to. S the boy that got out of the water and for what is sometimes definitive uh, exit of the water but we're going to see that it's kind of not a definitive exit of the water this will once again be a general presentation of tetrapods and will not dwell too much into the details to be completely honest I have like um, 15 uh, 15 things to 15 slides so it's not going to be, it's not going to take one hour of your time. It's not, I think it's, it's going to be a sub one hour stream. Um, which is going to be great because I need to conserve a bit of my strength for the stream that will come next. Which is the collab. The collab that has been wow, so many, so many months is making, so many weeks. But hey, here we go. Let's define Tetrapoda now. Will we? Do? Shall we? Tetrapoda. They go for four, they go for part, tetra, go four, part for legs, so it's animals with four limbs. You know them, birds, amphibians, mammals, well, reptiles, and sometimes things that don't have legs, like Sicilians and snakes. But never more than four legs. You can have, you can have like less than four legs, but you can never have more than four legs. That would be very, very different. It would, it would need like some, some more adaptations that we haven't yet, we haven't yet seen. Hello, H. How are you today? How are you? How are you today? We're going. We're doing a brief introduction of the tetrapods uh, today. A brief introduction to tetrapods because they're cool and good, and I like them. Everyone likes them because you're part of it. You're a tetrapod. I mean, all of those are fish technically, um, but. More than, they, more than fish, they are tetrapods. Because, yeah, like, um, <laughs> most vertebrates are fish. Like, they're, they're about 50% of all vertebrates are fish. And among those vertebrates, oh, you're making lunch. Delicious. Delicious. You know, it's funny because uh, since uh, tetrapods are considered, like, the ones good for eating by most people, uh, a lot more people are repulsed by fish than any other meats. Uh, funnily enough, funnily enough, like a lot, I, f I find that a lot of people are much more repulsed by eating some kind of uh, weight fish than eating snake, for example. No, fish are not tetrapods. No, no, no. Some fish are tetrapods. Not all tetrapod. Not all fish are tetrapods. Please, like a, a frog is a fish. I if we go by the definition that which I've been going. Like, this, this is a trick of a language, but if we go by the definition by which we've been going through these classes, all the animals that I present are to fish. 
After the first episode of fish are technically fish until I say otherwise and then we are wiping this lake clean. Which is why I find it very useful uh, to have my titles. In my titles I always say Eukaryota, Metazoa and then I should have said Cordata, I should have made Cordata. The problem is that we have a, um, we have a limit when it comes to YouTube titles. We have a limit. Otherwise I would have gone on and on and on and on with the length of the title. Official title. No, 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 H, no, 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 no. <laughs> Let's just forget about the fish part for now. Let's just forget about the fish part. The animals, four legs. Sometimes less, less, four, less than four legs, but they're defined by the ancestral characteristics of having four legs. Like. That's it. And the vertebrates. Vertebrates with four legs. I don't know, it sounds weird to me, but uh, you are the expert here. <laughs> they appeared around the Tornasian, which is uh, basically when Tiktaalik got out of the water. Uh, it's a period that Max returned from the Demonian, where most of the stuff that we find is in the water. I mean, most of the vertebrate stuff that we find is in the water, because, well, uh, invertebrates, they don't wait, they didn't wait that long. Uh, and the Carniboferous, the Carboniferous, Carboniferous, Carbon, Charbon, Coal. Uh, it's where we find most of our coal reserves, uh, due to the fact that there's been like a lot, uh, lot of swamp. Uh, the swamp uh, had... Well, basically, in a swamp, you have a good amount of sediments. Like, the, the water is, is very um, is very brackish, so you have a lot of sediments already. That are ready to cover any uh, kind of uh, dead, dead thing of, of vegetation that is, well, ready to be packed. Uh, less oxygen, which allows better for fertilization. And, well, if there's no oxygen, there's going to be less decomposition by bacteria that are going to die. So, it allows better fertilization. And through geological times, for this fertilization uh, goes through a concentration of the carbon content. <laughs> Hello, Sagittarius! How are you? Dictality has crawled out of a primordial soup. Now we hear. Yeah. 390 million years ago. But yeah, like I said, in the Carboniferous, um. First of all, like all the petroleum, uh, all the petroleum and uh, the coal that we have, not dinosaur. Dinosaur are much too recent for that. Uh, there's also the fact that um, the coal and petroleum mostly comes from uh, veg vegetal uh, biomass. Since, you know, Acanthostega could also be in that role, similar species. Yeah, but Acanthostega is a bit more like, it's more tetra -mo tetrapod than tetrapo tetrapodomorphoda. Morphos Tetramorpha, tetrapod morph, you know, te it's more tetrapod, like a full tetrapod, than a species that looks like a tetrapod. I mean, it's further down that, that further down that line. Uh, but there are relatively, f in th that goes to my next argument. This goes to the to the next thing that I wanted to say, is that there are relatively few terrestrial fossils of anything. Uh, plants, animals, and by animals I count vertebrates and invertebrates. Um, yeah, terrestrial fossils, we don't have a lot of them, uh, but we do know through biologic, uh, bi biolog through fossil records, we do know that <laughs> through fossil records that we do know that there's, there was a glacial uh, glaciation event. Uh, that could be seen uh, due to the cold water fauna that has been found. Uh, shelled animals and fish, mostly. It was basically... So, this period... So, my job is to not find faster way to turn dinosaurs into Bitcoin, only ancient swap moss. And... Moss. And... Ferns. Ferns. Yeah, basically that. Moss and ferns. I mean, of course, there's going to be some animals, uh, animal mass in there, but uh, the most, the most mass you're ever going to find is veg is plant mass anyway. So, um, and the most carbon dense, in my opinion, is plant mass 
anyway. So yeah. So yeah, you 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 are burning you're burning plants. It's not it's not dead dinosaurs. Uh, I wonder what, where the idea comes from. But yeah, 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 it's it's not dead dinosaurs, it's just it's dead plants. Like you you're not you're not you're not desecrating a grave unless you count like the, the death of a plant as a tragedy. Like, you know, something to be respected. And in that case, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we are definitely doing that, even at the moment. We're making out our houses out of bodies. I mean, that's what we are doing. We make our houses and our clothes out, out, out of bodies, technically, so... Um, <laughs> nothing changed. The unclean biofuel. That's what it is. Biofuel is not clean. Uh, and Like, I don't know what puts... It's in people's head that biofuel would be clean. Like, it's absolutely not carbon neutral. It's not carbon neutral at all. First of all, uh, like, when it comes to biofuel, depending on your sources, especially, like, when it's uh, biodiesel um, and bioethanol, first of all, like, you need to cultivate plants. So you need to then refine those plants that are sugar-producing, most of them, most of them anyway, into alcohol in, in case we want to make bioethanol. And that, all those processes take a lot of energy. This energy, how do you think that we, we do it? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it, yeah, it takes a lot of energy, water and soil uh, in order to make bioethanol. I mean, ethanol. Let's just call it ethanol and Diesel. I mean, let's call it like neo diesel rather than biodiesel, neo diesel. Yeah, it's, it's not exactly great. But hey, you know what's funny? Look at that! The landmass that made Australia is pretty much the same. But the landmass that was Australia is pretty much the same here. I like, guess very few variation. I think that here is the Indian subcontinent. I, I don't remember. Like, the, the Earth moved a lot uh, during the, uh, according to that time. A lot of it was in was in the Antarctic, but uh, yeah, this period of time was basically like a period of transition uh, where vertebrates and invertebrates came. Uh, like it was really the time where vertebrates really did became the ruler of the earth, both in the water and out of it. Did that one paper in the IDC about greenhouse and uh, N2O and biofuels? Uh, no, you. I don't think you did, but yeah, uh, N2O is not great either. N2O is not great either. No, oh, it's alright, it's alright. H, H, H. I love interacting. I love interacting. Those classes are mostly made to be interactive. Like, I present something, but the fact that you react, that you have questions, that you have reactions, that you have things for me to look up, to look, in, uh, to look into, is great. That's the, main that's the main goal. That's how everyone learns. That's how everyone learns. The more remark I have, the more successful it is. Because, uh, let's go. It also makes the thing a little, a little longer. <laughs> if I were to do a simple presentation of it, it would be like over in like 15 minutes. But uh, yeah, also, this period was known for one thing, um, terabytes. It was the last period of great diversi di diversification and experimentation for the families of trilobites, uh, terabytes, which are going to be irrelevant in future updates of uh, Earth, fortunately, in future geological eras. So, um, rest in peace, cool soldiers, you, you make the best fossils ever. Like. Terabytes are some of the best and most charismatic fossils you can ever find from that period of time. They're great. Uh, uh, TLDR would create more greenhouse effect to grow biofuel with industrial ag agriculture and fertilizer than uh, just to straight up burn up fossil fuel. That doesn't surprise me. That just doesn't surprise me at all. Yeah. Salute for, uh, salute for the soldiers. Respect. You were cool. And you were super cool for all the for all the geological time where in which you lasted, which was fairly long. To, to be completely honest, it was fairly long. Like uh, the the Torabat experiments, we look at them and say, "Oh, they disappeared. Oh, that, that's that's not so great." Like they've been around, they, they've been around for for a lot of time. They're cool. 
so we're going to concentrate on tetrapods now uh, fully and I want to really put into um, like this episode is going to really uh, show before the differences I'm going to show exact uh, to show a lot of what makes tetrapods tetrapods what makes them rec recognizable at first glance that this is pretty cool one too uh, yeah there are areas where you just break up random rocks and all, almost uh, all have one where... Yeah, 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 I had one. I discovered the Nautilus too. It was so great. It was such a cool... Such a cool fossils. Such cool fossils. They're great. And then we resurrected, resurrected them at Tabutus in, uh, in Pokemon. Yeah, I wanted to do like the fossil Pokemon joke uh, in, uh, <laughs> in this episode, but also the Monster Hunter one. Because, uh, believe it or not, all the non-Elder Dragon monster in Monster Hunter are tetrapods. They are. Are they synapsids or solopsids? Uh, most likely solopsids for most of them uh, with some synapsids. But uh, you're going to... I'm going to show it at the wits. Because, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, we have... Uh, tetrapod leaves are pretty homogeneous and they go really well with uh, the architecture that I've shown uh, with collacants. With collacants and the lungfish. You have a recognizable ulna, uh, no, a humerus, an ulna, radius, and then you have a carp, the metacarp, and the phalanges. Same here, you have the humerus, the radius, the ulna, the carps, the metacarps, and the phalanges. Right there. And that's, that's, that's a tetrapod's limb. That's a tetrapod's limb. This is dinosaurs, this is human, this is fossils. This is fossils uh, for Arcanthostega. I think this is Arcanthostega. Tetrapods. I mean, tetrapods, all of them. All of them are tetrapods anyway, except the other dragons. Um, Kirin. Kirin is a tetrapod. Kirin is Kirin is a, is a mammal. It's very clearly a mammal with some reptilian ca characteristics. Um, Fang beasts are synapsids. Fang wyverns and the other wyverns are um, are solipsids and, and that's it. And after that, you have the elder dragons, which are well, dragons. <laughs> they, they don't have to make sense. They're dragons. They're exapods, but they're not. They're not. I mean, I would love to see a theory that they're actually some kind of um, really weird invertebrate species, like Kushala Dora being actually a super weird insect. But uh, no, that that wouldn't work. They, they don't have they don't have enough of the characteristics of of um, of insect kingdom. Astelos, Astelos uh, being comprised in, in that, Astelos does not have the characteristics to to put him in insect kingdom. He has insect inspiration. There is some convergent evolution that makes him like uh, insect like, but uh, not an insect. Um. And those limbs, very interesting in the way that they're made. A bunch of lesser creatures in Monster Hunter are just dinosaurs. I mean, there are agglomeration of dinosaurs. Aptonoff, Aptonoff is a pretty cool one. I like Aptonoffs. Um, because they are, they are basically dinosaurs. They are basically grazing dinosaurs. Where you have some meat in their bones. Rather than just being, you know, uh, kind of just bones and skin. I like it. I really like it. Like, um... Monster Hunter World is basically my favorite Monster Hunter now I think about it. But it's mostly because of the ecological aspects. Um, but yeah, how do you make all those limbs uh, with a minimum amount of mutations? For example, in the way you make the humorous, the ulna, the radius and all that. Um, what you do is you touch, uh, you touch on something that I don't really like to touch upon, usually. Uh, because once again, I make I make itself known once again my distaste of embryology. Evo Devo, Evo Devo is not for evolution devolution. No, it's for evolutionary developmental biology. Evolution development biology. It's due to the discovery in the in the seventies of the homeotic genes. To do all your history lessons before the seventies and all the biological markers were discovered. Uh, we didn't have any molecular uh, evidence of evolution and how it affected embryology. Like, Charles Darwin's may himself, Darwin himself 
made uh, some supposition that things were related one to another due to the uh, due to development that was somewhat similar. But we didn't exactly have something like concrete. Monster Hunter really has does have a Jurassic Park feeling at, at sometimes. Yeah, but the first Jurassic Park, the first Jurassic Park, where you actually you you would be seeing dinosaurs at the top of what science would have created at that time, which is not the case for Jurassic Park, Jurassic World. But um, to go again, the most well-known developmental gene is the Hox genes. The Hox genes uh, have been mapped out. Uh, Especially in fruit flies, uh, but what is good with them is that they are like hox genes. They control body segments. I, di I didn't say it. I didn't say it, but we are segmented beings, and you see, uh, for example, uh, how can I? I can show it very easily here. You see very clearly that they are similar segments, and they are uh, they are you know a prime segment. Uh, medium segment and a terminal segment that are regulated through these genes. Our vertebras are regulated like that, you know, like the, the fact that something has to go at a certain part, as a certain part at a certain place, is regulated t through two aspects. First, first, uh, let me let me see. Can I open paint? Can I open paint and make it work? Can I open paint and make it work? Paints and no, and uh, ah. now once again, paint does not want to be sh paint does not want to be seen. That is awful. That is awful. What the heck? Over Christmas break, I went to DC and spent more time than I possibly should at the deep time exhibit at the... Uh, 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 and I uh, didn't even have enough uh, time to fully absorb anything. Yeah. Yeah, th there's so much there's so much to see. There's so much to see. But uh, le let's... Okay. So, let me explain it with less of a visual... Um, less of a visual aid. Too bad for me. We have... Molecul uh, molecular... Gradients... And time. A gene will be activated as a t at a certain time, at a certain, and will be active at a certain place. When they are active, they are going to diffuse. They are going to be some, some somehow diffuse. You know, it, it's like li it's like uh, something in a liquid. You cannot put a product and say, okay, it stays in this one place specifically. So you're going to have a gradient. This gradient is going to tell the cells during development their destiny. And since it's regulated through time, and you can go segment by segment, you can go and say, okay, you have T1, you have T2, you have T3, you have T4, you have T5, you have T6. And that goes to T12 for making vertebrates. And all the things that are inside these segments will have its destiny taken care of. Like at some point, uh, we're going to have to visit uh, that, exhi that exhibit virtually. Maybe, maybe. But I like to do my individual content. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe we could. Maybe we could make a special about that. We could absolutely do make a special about that. But here's the thing about the Hox genes. Um, the Hox genes, as you can see here, are, are shown and regulated both through space and through time. In, in this map, you see that Hox 1 does the head. It does the head right there. Hox 2, bam! Here, most musculus. It's in most musculus and it's in uh, mon Monogaster. Monogaster is uh, the, the fruit fly. Uh, C. elegans. C. elegans is like a worm. It's a very simple worm. Um, so I'm sure that we know exactly the C. elegans is one of the model of development. Uh, and why is that? It's because it has its each species of uh, of uh, this worm of this kind of worm has a set number of cells. It has a set number of cells. 
So one species, for example, is going to have 900 cells, for example. 920 cells? Something, something akin to that. And because we know that, we can observe very carefully the development of each and every cell until its final destiny. And so for that, C. elegans is the only living being that we have that has a complete cartography of every single one of its cells through its whole life, from conception to death. Every single one of its cells has a map which is accounted for for its development with all of the genes that are active in each and every one of the cells. And it took years of work, but we did it. So you could see, like, C. elegans is one, uh, is a very simple and in that aspect, a very useful. Which is also why we have uh, the, neur the neural map of C. elegans. And uh, they, they did that and they put it into a robot once. They, they actually did it, the man lads. <laughs> we actually trapped the, the, the spirit, like, the, the, the virtual spirit, like, the virtual, like, yeah, the virtual, uh, like, neurom, uh, I'm going to call it a neurom of a worm, trapped it into a Roomba. Yeah, technically, I was thinking like the worm, it was the virtual brain of the worm, but it was in a Roomba. Yeah, mind-made horrors with incomprehension. Uh, when it gets injured, does the cell get replaced? I don't remember if it has stem cells, because you need to understand that it's a living being that is very simple, and... Maybe it has contingencies for that. Maybe it has regeneration. Like, let me verify that. Let me verify that, Razor. Also, hi, Razor. C. Elegance regeneration. Accent regeneration. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Accent repairs themselves. Yeah, but I'm not looking for that. Like, it's a self repair for cells. Normal generation in kernel, kernel abilities, elegance. So, neuron injury. Regenerative medicine. Regenerative process, stem cells. Like, uh, regeneration. Regrowing. Yeah, it does. It does. Uh, and you know what's. Okay, okay, from what I see, you know what's, uh, you know what's, uh, the, 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 you, you know what's the thing, you know what's the funniest thing, Riser? So, doing how so I can comprehend these man made horrors? <laughs> they put in the physically, like, uh, just remote. No, 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 no. They made a virtual map, they made a virtual map of, of um, all the neural interactions of the worm with its muscles and itself, and you know, the ganglion, and put it, and put this virtual map inside of a robot. Uh, so yeah, it was uh, basically it was a brain uploading for for, for 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 a worm and then into a robot. Uh, but yeah, Riser, you're not going to believe that. Not only do they regenerate. Yes, it is open worm project. It is the open worm project it, because it is it is the open worm project. So, so yeah, we, we are on March to create the first virtual organism. Uh, and yeah, yeah, okay. So when you cut off some some of these neurons, not only does it regenerate, it regenerates the neurons and their interactions between each other and their positions. So it regenerates and it keeps its memories, which is crazy to think about. Like it has an internal molecular memory of its own memories of how the neurons are, supp are supposed to be connected to each other's. I mean, it's fairly simple given the limited amount of neurons, but still, it is fairly impressive. You would think that it, yeah, yeah there's so many, uh, there's so many implications. There's some people that put it into one of those Lego robots. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, put it into, uh, in, into the, into the Roomba. Yeah. So yeah, it's very much um, it's very much man-made horrors within our comprehension, because you are we are making them we are making them right now. 
Um, but yeah, Hawks jeans extremely important. Uh, if you have anomalies when it comes to Hawks jeans, uh, it's bad. But it's less bad than it sh if you were to alter a fun another fundamental gene. Like for example, if you have another vertebrae, you know, you have you have one more abdominal segment. Cool. Like maybe it's going to cause complications, but it's not going to be you know it's gonna, it's not going to lead to your death during development, you know. And in some cases, well, did you know that, like, snakes, they have hox genes and they repeat the same gene again and again and again and again and again. Um, and they repeat it, so they are technically all, they are technically all torso, and they have a tail. But they don't have, you know, they don't have to have crazy mutations about it. You can just copy-paste the genes, you, you can copy, can I copy-paste the genes if you want to have another segment of, a, of the same thing? And that's it. Like you know, it's not dramatic. It's safer when it comes when it comes to evolution and cre creating diversity uh, in physiology and creating more niches. It's safer to alter the hox the hox genes and how they interact uh, between each other and their chronology, rather than interacting with, for example, uh, how a liver is supposed to be made. You know, like if you interact with the chronology of what cells are supposed to become a liver and the quantity. If you have to interact with the chronology of uh, what is supposed to be a vertebrae, it's not great. Like, what's supposed to be a bone, it's not great. If you have to interact with the chronology of what uh, makes, like, uh, when vertebrae, when, uh, when and where, it's a bit better. It's a bit better. Y you, are, you are safer to experiment. And the, the, the advent of creatures like Sicilians and snakes uh, make it absolutely believable. And also murine whale, uh, murine, not whale, um, Murine eels, murine eels, and millipedes. Like you, you can create very successful light form, but are just you know going long. They just go long. But uh, that will be explored further uh, in an episode dedicated to embryology, because embryology is hard. Developmental biology is hard. It's so hard and confusing. Uh, multiplying the gene, deleting the gene, uh, like multiplying the gene depends. It's multiplying, deleting, uh, deleting, uh, altering, uh, like silencing, etc. It's better control and less risky than regular mutations. Because you get a mutation of something fundamental molecularly, not great. You get, the chronolo you, you get to alter the chronology, like, I'm repeating myself, you get to alter the chronology of when the arm is supposed to be formed. Okay, it's not great, you're, you're creating quite, quite a mutant, but, you know, it's going to live. Maybe even going to reproduce. Maybe it's going to have an advantage. Maybe not. Hey, who knows? Maybe even it's simply going to, like, change the pattern of the fur. Maybe something else. And yeah, it's through the control of... Control genes, which usually have so much redundancies that uh, you don't you don't have to fear a lot. Uh, a lot of control genes, uh, I mean, no, you do have to fear because a lot of control genes, for example, are genes that have to do with uh, anti-cancer, that uh, anti-cancer genes, like onco... Uh, anti-oncogenes, yeah, anti-oncogenic genes, something like that. But once again, it's less risky than mutating something that is absolutely fundamental. You can just, you know, swap parts, go around it, be, be wild. And uh, afterwards... Um, yeah, there's something that I want to, do sh to change. An amniont. Like, in tetrapodia. There's uh, four great, there's three great families when it comes to tetrapoda, and we're going to see them uh, right now. There's anamnions, which are right there. Hello, uh, that's uh, anamnions. Uh, they are right there here. Uh, right here is in, in the map and here uh, when it's developed. With uh, Lysamphibia, uh, Lysamphibia being what we call amphibians today. So frogs, salamanders. Uh, newts, 
Sicilians again. I like Sicilians. They're cool. Uh, yeah, uh, least amphibians. Yeah, there we are. Uh, most of most of the Anamnions dead. I mean, they don't exist anymore. But we have the least amphibians, and they have they are very important because they are pretty fragile. Uh, they are like they have conquered the world. Like, there, there, there's frogs and toads and newts and salamanders pretty much everywhere in the world. Uh, some have chosen very, very weird strategies in order to leave, which I find really cool. Um, however, when it comes to anamnions, uh, they are really fragile right now. And one of the first species that uh, have been confirmed that uh, anthropophagenic, uh, you know, the Anthropocene, there's the Anthropocene mass extinction, is the Cosoidca golden toad, uh, which is a really cool, really charismatic species that I'm not going to show, um, for which we haven't seen any since 1989. Completely disappeared, and we have photo evidence of them. No, I'm, I'm actually going to show uh, golden toad, Cosoidca and golden toad. Like the. Like, yeah, they were cool. They were cool dudes. Hey, they were cool dudes, dude. Like, it's not cool that they're dead. It's not cool that they disappeared. Is it our fault? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because uh, amphibians uh, are very fragile when it comes to chemical pollution. Uh, chemical pollution, uh, temperature-related pollution, too. So, it's not great. Uh, we get to dump all of our stuff into the water. And uh, as someone would say, the chemicals we dump into the water are making the frogs gay. But here I'm not going to use gay as the sexuality, it's uh, gay pretty much as the slur. Yeah, yeah and uh, they, they were pretty cool. Look at that, they, they were pretty cool. Like, the, like, it, frogs are massively affected. Some of them, like um, the bullfrog. Not so much, uh, they, they, they are finding their stride because they are very invasive, uh, absolutely, absolutely fatal uh, for, other, for some other species. Problem is, uh, when they are invasive, amphibians are really invasive. They really are invasive when they are resistant. But it could be that the, anthrop the Anthropocene uh, extinction event, uh, it could be that the Anthropocene extinction event really does sign the end of amphibians. And black colacant and all that, we're only going to, f to see a few select species. And that could very well be the, the fate uh, of amphibians. I mean, as you can see, uh, when it comes to diversity, I mean, they were not in the decline. It's not like they were in the decline, but they were not like, you know, they're, they're not like dominant when it comes to ecosystems. They're not exactly dominant. Uh, but la now they're very, very much in the decline. Both by habitat transformation, uh, pollution, and invasive species. Then we have uh, sauropsids. Right there, sauropsids. Uh, which com contain pretty much all the lizards. All of the lizards, right there. And uh, something that uh, isn't shown is like sauropsids and synapsids are... Uh, contemporary, contemporary, uh, that they are. Uh, they are completely contemporary, and um, here you have lizards with uh, lepidosaurs. You have, you have, you have turtles. You have turtles there. Here they are. They are contemporary. In Socia, you have the crocodiles. They are here. They are right there, and <laughs> dinosaurs. The sort of saurians, you know, dinosaurs, right there, dinos. And you have the birds within dinosaurs. They are, they, they are theropods. The birds as, are the last living theropods. I'm going to say, I want it, uh, it would be cool if we had at least one sauropod. What contemporary means in, con in context, it means a uh, con, like a shed, and temporary for uh, time. So, so uh, you need to understand that uh, synapsids and sauropsids diverged from between each other. Like we pretty much like we are from the same time. 
Like Synapsids are not mammal mammals. It would be calling like it would be calling a collecant a shark. Like it would be calling like a, a shark a collecant. It would be calling us a shark. It's not the same. It's very much not the same. But we are synapsids. And as you see here, in synapsids, pretty much all of them are ex extinct. But there's mammals. There's mammals. And there's birds. Like, pretty much all of them here are extinct. Except birds. And crocodiles. And turtles. And lizards. And snakes. So, it, uh, sauropsids are fairly successful. Uh, sauropsids are actually fairly successful when it comes to uh, surviving extinction events. Especially those rascals right there. Especially crocodilians. <laughs> Crocodile morpher. Yeah, there, there, are some, there are some really cool rascals there. They, they tried their stuff. They tried their stuff and uh, some are still alive. To this day. Really charismatic, really strong. Uh, really adaptable. Same with lizards, same with birds. Birds are really cool. Uh, as it come, when it comes to dinosaurs, birds are really cool. And uh, yeah, there's. I would have really loved to uh, to have more sauropods, and only only this year. But uh, you know, you you deal you you do with the cards you've dealt. We are never going to see a, a living dinosaur. But it doesn't mean that we like. Here's the thing. We're never going to see a dinosaur in our life. Except birds. Except birds. But, instead of being killed by a Velociraptor or, a or Deinonychus, weak or a Utahraptor, let's call it a Utahraptor because uh, the, the ones in Jurassic Park are pretty much Utahraptors. Uh, instead of being called by a, it's, instead of being killed by a, by a Utahraptor, well, we have Cassowaries. <laughs> we have Cassowaries, which are pretty much have the same amount of clothes and uh, the same amount of aggressivities and some fatalities to their name and we have lions and we have elephants and we have hippopotamus and we have whales like you need to understand that blue whales uh that whales and mam and mammalians were and are like the biggest animals that ever lived like the biggest animal that ever lived was a mam was a mammalian it it was great to think. It's great to think about. Uh, what are you supposed to do with all the amber and cleaning equipment? Uh, um, I mean, it depends on with what you want to complete the DNA of those things. Depends on uh, what you want to complete DNAs with those things. Uh, I don't recommend frogs. I don't recommend frogs. Like it's fairly, it's fairly, it's fairly out there. Like if we want to go for Deinonychus, Dino let's go for you know birds. Or let's try to reverse, you know, um, there's this archaeologue, uh, paleontologist, actually. There's this uh, paleontologue, uh, paleontologist that uh, has this project to go through development, to go through development genes and try to reactivate uh, the teeth making ones. Uh, and the ones that make the limbs a bit more reptile like. So they want to make uh, chickenosaurus. So they. You know, we had birds things, we had bird things, and I really want to see where, it, where they're going with this. I really want to see where they're going with this. Because of course it can create a, a Jurassic Park situation, but I am waiting for it. I'm waiting for, to create a, to, to people creating a Jurassic Park situation. Because it's kind of cool. But I mean, uh, technically it would still be a chicken with weird deformities. But hey, who knows? And we could, it could also make us learn how to alter better at the genes, especially if we try to pinpoint something in order to go and try to get ourselves a, a specific character. Uh, that could be really, really cool. Uh, I'm not going to lie, that could be really, really cool. But yeah, um, the distinction between Amniota and uh, Anamniota and Amniota is that. Well, for a moment, all the extant species that we have, so extant for living species that we have, of Anamniota for our uh, amphibians. And uh, just a reminder that amphibians, just like fish, are just as modern and cool and weird as birds and mammals and all that. But you know, there's, there's less contention about thinking that a frog is, you know, 
as elaborated and evolved as anyone else. I mean, there is some, very some contention, but you know, in the frogs, as the uh, like the the, the 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 frog as they as they go. Reverse engineering software is already uh, really hard. I imagine it's just impossible with genes. You would think so. But uh, did you know that there's fossilization within the genome? There, there's a fossil of viruses that uh, we could, we, we we technically mapped out and reconstituted. I mean, reconstituted genetically to find the, the, nearest, uh, the nearest cousins. So there is, there is a process to go and go for reverse engineering. We can, we can go with that. Like uh, most most of the stuff, most of the stuff when it comes to biology is reverse engineering because we, we don't know how to program a gene right now. We don't know how to make a specific protein to go a specific task. So we're going to search a protein that goes a certain uh, that goes uh, through a certain living being to insert it into some, something else. Technically, it's reverse engineering. Yeah. Technically, all what we've did in in biology is okay. This thing does that. What in this thing does that? And that's literally our whole history of transgenesis is that. It's uh, okay, so you are pretty resistant to heat. Um, might be due to this gene in this protein, so I'm going to take this sequence and put it in another thing. So yeah, oh, you, you create a toxin. Oh, pretty interesting, pretty interesting. And this toxin only works on insects? Mmm, pretty interesting for crops. Mmm, oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, you, you go there. And before we had CRISPR-Cas9 and all that, we, we had to use some very weird methods in order to insert the genes. But uh, yeah, the modern forms of amphibian is just as modern uh, as mammals and all that. Uh, so much so that I think that the, 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 the um, prototypal shape of a frog, as we know a frog to be, uh, kind of appeared during the Triassic. And you need to understand that mammals appeared during the Jurassic. Like mammals, actual mammals, appeared during the Jurassic. I mean, they didn't look like modern mammals. So, and so did these frogs and all that didn't appear during the Jurassic. But I don't think that you would see during a, a period where there was a lot, and I mean a lot, of jungles and swamps and all that. I don't think that you would see the frog right now that is living, uh, you know, that is literally resuscitating itself after going through a period of pure congelation. Because it has a protein within itself that is an antifreeze. It's literally filling itself with antifreeze agents. Slowing it, slowing its metabolism down to a near crawl, to, to to a near like a near death, and then restart restart and reboot itself during the summer. Uh, this one Alaskan frog. So during the amphibian episode, that is going to be the next one. We're going to have a lot to talk about. We're going to have a lot to talk about. And then again, afterwards, uh, we are going to talk about synapsids and sauropsids. Which is more like anapsids, synapsids, and diapsids. Synapsids, you have one thingy here. One thingy here for a year. Diapsids, so sauropsids, uh, the anapsids are, the anapsids are present, but they're right there. They're right there. Anapsids are right there, and they pretty much disappeared. After that, we have the diapsids. Uh, like, turtles don't have a thing, so for a while we thought that they were anapsids, but no, they are diapsids and they felt they, they filled the hole. But yeah, uh, synapsids, they have one, one hole here, diapsids, they have two holes. This is the main difference. This is the main difference. Because at the time, this is a synapsid. Being a synapsid doesn't mean that you look like a pupper. Even though all the, though all the extant, so the living, the living modern members kind of do. Like, this is a synapsid. This is uh, genetically mo uh, a match. It's more of a match than a bird or a lizard. Looks like a lizard, yeah. Looks like a lizard, but it kind of was. <laughs> because it kind of was. Like, functionally, it, it, it kind of was a lizard, you know? There, there wasn't much of a difference. 
And that's the main that's the main difference. Like the, the differences are going to accumulate. They are going to accumulate. Uh, but uh, we have hundreds of millions of years for that. Hundreds of millions of years. And uh, another thing is that most of the charismatic megafauna that we, we think about uh, are pretty much sources and synapses adjacent. Like, this is the crocodilians, the crocodilians, of course, this is the Tyrex, this is the Kazawari, this is the giant uh, Galapagos turtle, this is the Hypopotamus, this is an African elephant, and this is a Paleoxodont. Paleoxodont uh, is. Yeah, Paleoxodont is the biggest living terrestrial mammal that ever was. It was 22 tons. No, I think it was 12 tons? 12 metric tons? What, what okay, so let me see, let me see. Paleoxodont, wait. Pale, 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 uh, pale. Uh, 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 what's your estimated weight? So wait. What's your estimated weight? Oh, yeah, twelve tons. Pretty much. No, I'm I'm not thinking about this one. I'm thinking about the the, the, the taller one. Um, I'm thinking about the taller one. I'm thinking about the bigger one. I'm thinking about the bigger one. Uh, Luxonot Africana. Yeah, Namedicus. Namedicus. And it would be... No, not Namedicus. No, because this, this is... No, it was Namedicus. Yeah, 22 tons. 22 tons. Yeah, this, this elephant would have bodied a T-Rex. This elephant was pretty much bigger than a T-Rex. Like, imagine an elephant that is... Uh, what? What's the size already? Oh yeah, 5 meters tall. A 5 meters tall elephant. That is really cool. But... You know, it doesn't mean it doesn't have to be including only animals from the past. Like our megafauna is pretty cool too. Imagine the Turks or the crocodilians going, uh, R. You know, like in Banjo Kazooie, the, the crocodiles they, they go R. But yeah, we have the uh, We have uh, we we have the Opototomus. Like you're not going to say to me that the Opototomus is not uh, charismatic. A megafauna and not dangerous. Like the, hippot the hippopotamus would have found their niche uh, in the Jurassic. Like there is this thing that you know the, the Jurassic was all oh, this super, this super uh, who would win T-Rex or uh, not every mission. Oh, yeah, elephant but truck. I mean, I don't, I don't like the who would win because it would depend on anything. Like if it was like. Uh, a pack of young Tyrexes going against uh, a, a sick elephant. Like, you know. Like a, a, a sick mega elephant. Yeah, yeah uh, of course. But if it was like a, a, like a whole pack of elephants, like modern elephants, again, against Tyrexes, I think that the elephants would win. Like, it depends. It, it all depends. And while there would be conflicts, and I think that Tyrexes would eat elephants if, uh, if it if it was, um, you know, modern, if it was a modern animal, I think that it would have its own problems, and most of the problem would be both the, the, the food restrictions, because it, it would need to eat a lot, given the, the small size of the prey that it would find, that are not elephants, and um, the, the defense of the prey themselves, because the elephants remember, and they are vicious. They are absolutely vicious. Also, this technically has the longest teeth of all of the animal kingdom. Uh, th th this thing. Longest teeth of the animal kingdom. That ever were.
Because it's always, it always wears me out to think that, you know, those things are teeth. Those things are teeth, like, dude. Use your teeth in your mouth. And uh, of course, of course, tetrapods get, came out of the water, that's for sure. That's for sure, but let's not forget that we came back. We came back for water. We, we did. We said to ourselves, "Okay, let's go. Let's fucking go. We can do it." The most competitive, the most competitive, um, the most competitive biome on Earth. We can absolutely do it. Ocean biome, river biome, uh, lake biome. We have amphibians. We have we have diapsids. We have synapsids. We can go. And if it never forgets, it also never forgives. Absolutely, it never forgives, and it gives like. Elephants have grudge, and we have generational grudges. You need to understand, elephants have generational grudges, so they can fuck you up for generations. And, and this, this was the biggest predator. For me, this is the biggest predator that ever was. It's called Leviathan, uh, Leviathan Melvilli. You have to wonder, <laughs> fuck, go back. No, it's more like we we came out of the water, but. And you know, it's, they they left uh, they left us uh, out of water, but they did they made one mistake. They left us alive, so we came back. And now we have orcas. We have orcas. Orcas are awesome, and we have blue whales that are bigger than dinosaurs. You need to understand, like people don't understand how absolutely enormous a blue whale is. I have found like. When I was in uh, when I was in the 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 Museum of Natural History of my own city, which has its own collections of bones and fossils, which is pretty pretty enormous, it has a whole blue whale skeleton that it had that it had to that it had to to inventory and to 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 to, to use otherwise. Now we have Chloe and Chai Lily. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. But a blue whale skeleton, like, I have seen only one bone, one jawbone of a blue whale. One jawbone. And let me tell you, it came from one side of a room to the other. It is not something that you realize. It is not something that you understand. Intellectually, you understand. Yes, this thing is the biggest animal that ever... That one of the biggest animals that ever was. It is bigger than a dinosaur. It is one of the biggest thing that... Uh, that moves, you know? But you don't understand how small you are compared to a single jawbone. It did not even have flesh. You know, it's one of the... One of the most pathetic display of a life can be the bones. Are the bones. You don't have the flesh, you don't have the muscles, you don't have the power in that. But you feel so small. You feel so small. I did see a huge megalodon, they have... Uh, look, look at it and how big it is, and it was like... That actually seems all about right. That actually seems about right, yeah. But megalodon uh, would have been bodied by Leviathan Mel uh, Melvilli. Because you need to understand, this is a super predator. This is the whale with the biggest teeth. Because it hunted. It, in, the in the time that it appeared, it hunted things the size of Megalodon. This thing is bigger than a blue whale. And it's much angrier. This is much angrier. This is Leviathan. Like, Leviathan in Jewish basically means whale. But this is a Leviathan. This is the biggest animal that, uh, that I think... I think it is the biggest animal that was recorded. This would body a Megalodon. This is much more modern. It is a it is a child. It is an absolute giga child. It is the sigma of the of prehistoric whales. It is an absolute sigma. Of course, we have Ichthyosaurus and we have Plesiosaurus. We have Plesiosaurus. It, it's pretty cool. Like it's a bit uh, like uh, there was a whole top of. Uh, it is the Leviathan. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It is the Leviathan. <laughs> yeah, it is. And uh, this is Archelon. Archelon, which was the biggest turtle. It is a big turtle. Big sea turtle. Enormous. Absolutely enormous. Uh, and that's something that you... Uh, that is also uh, pretty cool when you need to... When you understand one of the biggest laws 
on how to protect yourself against predation? Size. What wins fight? Size. Size and mass. And the fact that you have a shell on top of that, incredible. The fact that we have intelligence, uh, like pretty much put a whole, um, how to say, it, it put an asterisk on size wins fights. But you need to understand that the animal kingdom, the biggest thing that uh, that makes uh, makes makes you a predator or not. Yeah, for Melville. Yeah. Yeah, because it it is the archetypal. Uh, it is the archetypal uh, Leviathan. Le Leviathan Melville is the archetypal Moby Dick. Like it would be the mythological whale. You think of a whale. You think of what it could accomplish. It is Leviathan Melville. It is the apex of a whale. Archelon was a big boy. It was a big boy. And there was a whole lot of plesiosaurus, which are pretty cute. They're, they're kind of sea puppers. The size does matter. The size matters a lot. It matters a lot. You don't understand how much it matters. What counts is to have the right size for the right job. And, it, and when it comes to avoided predation, you, need to be as, you want to be as big as possible. That is one of the strategies. The hardness. For Akilong, yes too. It does it does matter. The hardness matters. Akilong was rock hard. It was rock hard. I wish Leviathan Melvi was documented more. I wish too. Because a lot of people focus on uh, on Megalodon and say, Oh, you know, Megalodon may still exist and all that. Nah, -uh. first because they, they, they pretty much disappeared way before. Way before. And also because what would feed Megalodon? What would f what would feed the Leviathan? L what would feed the Leviathan? Basically, <laughs> but that's the same question. What would feed the Leviathan? But imagine, just imagine. You don't need to fear Megalodon. You need to fear Leviathan because the Leviathan would be so much more intelligent, so much more vicious. Like, I think that uh, dolphins and whales are the animals, and orcas are the animals that are able to enact cruelty. You know, they are able to enact. Wanton cruelty for entertainment. I'm not saying that they're evil, but they can, they can be cruel. There's a difference between me, uh, for me, between being evil and cruel. And whales are intelligent enough to derive entertainment through cruelty and through revenge. So Leviathan would be one of the biggest horror monsters I could think of. Like ima just imagine the sheer, sh the sheer size of the thing. Like the Meg, <laughs> fuck the Meg, Leviathan, Leviathan, 100%. The Virgin Megalodon versus the Chad Leviathan Melville, yeah, yeah, pretty much. And um, because because the, all of the species are very charismatic, there's also one thing that, and a lot of those are also very modern. You can absolutely believe that I'm going to talk about eating them all. Gonna eat them all, gonna eat them all, tetrapods! Absolutely, we're going to eat whale, we're going to eat walrus, we're going to eat snail, we're not snail, snails are not tetrapods. We're going to eat frogs, we're going to eat chicken, we're going to eat um we're going to eat cobis, we're going to eat lizards, mammoth. Holy shit! You you mean to that existing giant whale that was uh, smart enough to hurt you for fun? Yeah. I mean <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> they already do, buddy. <laughs> they already do, buddy. <laughs> Blackfish, wa Blackfish was a sh was a movie for a reason. <laughs> You can't, you can't believe how much damn frog eaters, yeah. But we've eaten them all and we're going to eat them all. Mammoth included, you know there's, there's researchers that, eat, that have eaten mammoth, at least claim to have eaten mammoth. Yeah, those guys exist. Those guys exist. Also because, yeah, oh, mammoth was mm, yummy, yummy. I mean, mammoth was on the decline uh, when we hunted them down to extinction. Well, we don't. We never hunted them down to extinction. We hunted populations down to extinction, that's for sure. But mammoths survived until 4,000 years ago, where they went extinct. Um, 
These are jokes about the French eating frog legs. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely, my friend. Absolutely. Mwah. Everything goes down great when it's deep fried, my friend. And a little bit of chicken fried. <laughs> uh, do I have the meme? Do I have the meme that I can insert? Do I have the meme? Please tell me that I have it. Tell me that I have it. No, I don't have it. Oh, I think that I have it. Researchers, sure. I mean, come on. Come on. I, I want to call them gourmet culinary explorers. But uh, there are also people that are trying to uh, recreate that grown uh, mammoth meat. And some people don't understand that that grown meat is not going to be that tasty. It, it, needs, it, it needs a lot of things to be tasty. It needs a lot of things to be tasty and unfortunately that doesn't include anything. That doesn't include anything that, gro that grown meat would, would, would have. Too bad for for us, but uh, if elephants, if elephant numbers come back up, I'll be sure to eat them. <laughs> they do remember for sure, for sure. But if it could eat me, I'm sure they would. But uh, yeah, they. Can I? Yeah. And a little bit of chicken fry. Cold beer on Friday night. My parents think the thing just right. Absolutely. And the radio world. But I'm going to include recipes on how to eat tetrapods and the species involved. That's for sure. That is included. That is included within my parasite classes. Because I'm a parasite. The only thing I do is eat, you know? Thanks, Pippa. Thanks, Pippa. Uh, pink woman to pink woman, you know? Pink woman to pink woman. But yeah. Uh, fortunately, that was the overview. Next week is... Uh, next week will be Pepe. Next week will be absolutely Pepe. We are going to explore the kingdom of Pepe. Pepe is great. Pepe is love. Later in the day, we're going to have a collab. We're going to have a collab with him, Chan, Ovikezu, and um, Oji san. And Ojo Oji san. Oh shit. Was it, was it that loud? Was it that loud? Oh, I'm sorry about it. I couldn't hear it. I cannot hear I cannot hear any sources. Any new sources, I cannot hear them. Which I think is really weird. You if you want to do adjustment on the fly. Yeah, you cannot monitor them. <laughs> the alleged outright frog. Sag. Can I have some Sag in in, in chats? C can I have some Sag? <laughs> 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 because uh, yeah, it's going to be Pepe, and uh, yeah, it's not going to be fun when we, when we come to the uh, to the human parts. To the uh, yeah, because I haven't done overfishing for fish. But uh, we're going to do recipes. We're going to do recipes for for Pepe. So yeah, funny frog, funny frog, frogs, frogs, funny fox, cute. Uh, we are going to have. So uh, yeah, yeah uh, they are going to they are going they are getting they are getting bodied by the Anthropocene extinction events. They are absolutely getting bodied by the Anthropocene extinction events. But uh, yeah, it is uh, it is pure sag. Let me tell you that. Let me tell you that, pure sag. Oh well, feels bad, man. Yeah, feels bad, man. But yeah. Uh, that was it for this week. Uh, next week is going to be a much better constructed episode with much more focus because we're going to go to amphibians. We're going to uh, we're going to see all your friends, all your friends right there. The uh, Costa Costa Rica golden frogs, the frogs that we can only see in photos, and what conspiracy theorists might be right about because uh, I mean we have we have no proof that they exist until 1989. So yeah, they're cool. They're yeah, cool. We're going to we're going to see them. We're going to see frogs. We're going to see toads. We're going to see Sicilians. We're going to see extinct. Uh, we're going to see extinct uh, um, members of amphibians, 
we're going to do a cool job. And we're going to present uh, the anatomical particularities. Because uh, what I didn't say about tetrapods, for example, is that the ancestral trait is to have um, three valves within the heart. So one atrium and two valves, two, 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 um, two compartments, two other compartments. One to go for the general circulation and one to go for, uh, one to go for, the, to, for the lungs. And we think uh, that in. I'm going to. I'm not going to spoil you. I'm not going to spoil you. You're going to see. But uh, an amphibian's life, pretty sad. But pretty cool sometimes. And they are great, great fathers sometimes. Great fathers sometimes. Well. That was all over. That was over is for today. That was all. All very well today. That was it when it comes to parasite classes. I hope that you had fun. I certainly did. I certainly did have. Certainly did have. I hope that you. I hope, however, that you have a great day. Maybe you will see me on Twitch tomorrow. Not not tomorrow. Like later today. Later today when it will come to the collab with him, Ove, and oh, what is that? I think I repeat myself. Dementia much. But yeah. See you very very soon. It was a great time. Bye! You can, you know, you know that I'm going to begin. You absolutely know that I'm going to begin the next episode by Pepe, by Shadile, by Pepe. Come on, come on. You know that, you know that I can't, you can't, I, I can't begin the next episode without some Pepe.